The really unique thing about simulation is that it gives med students or learners an opportunity to be in charge. When med students are shadowing on the wards, they might be in the room of a critically ill patient, but they're probably like pushed to the side of the room. They're not making any of the decisions. They're just watching, they're just observing. But simulation gives them a safe environment to practice being on their own and practice making decisions on their own. And even though they know it's a simulated environment, they still feel the pressures of decision making. You can learn a lot in class, you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you can't apply it, or learn how to apply it hands-on with a patient, like that makes a big difference. It kind of connects A and B together. The experiences that I've had in, in simulation have been incredibly valuable. It's a great way to practice uh, skills, both in terms of evaluating patients and then just doing procedures in a way that helps you identify the areas that are holes in your knowledge or gaps in your skill set that you otherwise may have missed in an environment where you don't have the same consequences as when you're actually treating patients. The cases we went through today are emergent, life-threatening situations. And those are things that you want to rehearse and get to the point where it's muscle memory, it's second nature. So I think not doing that is you know, almost irresponsible. You don't want your first uh, try at an emergent situation to be in real life. So I think this provides a really safe environment uh, to work out any potential kinks and to, to just get the repetitions down. I basically designed the simulation as something that I wish I would have had as a medical student. My goal is to help every fourth year medical student transition from being a fourth year medical student to an intern and help bridge that gap a little bit. It's all meant to simulate real life and the sort of experiences they'll have once they're interns.